don't know about you, but I feel encouraged in God's house this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the old song says I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I got to make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempt me and he tries to turn me around. I just say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Hallelujah. He, de he definitely does that, tries to turn us around, but amen. Amen. I know too much now. I done got too educated. Amen. I know what God will do, Brother Don. Amen. God's good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hey, he still tries. He still tries. Oh, devil still tries, but I'm determined to hold out to the end. Thank God. Thank God. I'm going to tell you, I'm just be real with you this morning. The old devil speaks to this pastor. I, I'm not giving the devil credit. I'm just telling you how subtle he is. I was just walking up this hill this morning, coming in these front doors, and that devil spoke to me and said, uh, you ought to just close this down. There's just not much interest no more. And start speaking those things into my head. I want to tell you what the devil consistently tries to get us to quit. Amen. But I'm not going to quit. Amen. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go forward. How many is going to go forward with me this morning? Praise the Lord. We may be feeling a little down, may feel a little weak sometimes, but uh, as I told the kids today, you're going to have those days where you just don't feel like it. They're going to be there. That don't mean quit. Amen. Stay the course. Let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. We'll be going to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. We're going to look into uh, a little story about Jacob and Esau. I'm sure very familiar to most of us. Genesis 25. Amen. I sure trust the Lord to help us this morning. Amen. I know you probably have already eat well on the Word of God this morning, Sunday school, but we could always use more, couldn't we? Amen. Amen. Genesis 25, we'll begin reading verse 29. It says, And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at a point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Could we bow our heads and ask the Lord to bless his word this morning? Father, we come to you, ask you, Lord, for your blessings over the word of God. I pray, speak life in our heart this morning. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you for a little while this morning on don't give up your blessings. Don't give up your blessings. Praise the Lord. I, I need my blessings, don't you? Amen. The Lord has given me something. Amen. For eternity. He has given me right to heaven through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And I don't want to give that up. Do you? No, let's don't give it up. You can just leave this on if you don't mind, brother. Esau. We all know through the word of God that he was a hunter. He was a man that liked to go out and hunt and kill the wild to, to eat, to suffice him and his family or whoever. But the hunter, Esau, one day he becomes hunted, you could say. And uh, as we look at his 
appetite, whatever had happened that caused him to stay out for so long time and become uh, in despair for food and drink, or his body had become malnourished, and he was so hungry that he felt like that he was on the verge of death, and he could not control that appetite, if you will. But actually Esau here, he was revealing some truth about himself, about his character. He cares for nothing whenever he's hungry. He did it, it, all sense of life and his inheritance, his, uh, you know, he was the firstborn. And, and we know that the firstborn in these days, they was uh, to receive the inheritance. They was the one that, you know, kind of like they, uh, they do in England. They have that the inheritance, the royal family, and it's passed from one to the other, and the you know the firstborn of each generation, and and it goes on like that. And Esau was the man that uh, was to have the inheritance after his father was to pass, and he gives up all of that for a bowl of soup. Yeah. It's amazing what sometimes that we'll give up our blessing for. I've seen people in my little short lifetime give up a good life, give up their family, give up the good things of God for a bowl of soup, if you will. <laughs> right? Give up the things of the Lord just for some pleasure of sin. Give up the goodness of God in their life for a small bowl of soup in this world. Don't give up your blessings. I want to encourage somebody this morning not to give up your blessing that you have. Look around, you see what you're blessed with in your life. I want to tell you, it doesn't mean it's not an established fact that it's always going to be there. Amen. Uh, and that is up to you, really, if your blessing is going to stay. Amen. I want mine to stay. I don't want to give up my blessings. You see, the devil is so blinding. He can blind the saints of God at times if we're not praying, if we're not on our toes, so to speak. If we're not aware and, and aware of what the old devil is trying to do, he's trying to steal your blessing. He's trying to rob you of your salvation. Amen. And I want to be uh, of a mindset today that I'm not willing to give up my blessings. I don't want to give up my blessing. What is my blessing? Those, those vary <clears throat> from one person to the next this morning according to what your blessing may be. I know that is all different, but I'm thankful for the blessings that God has placed in my life. So grateful for them. So back on Esau. On the outside, he looks good, but he's empty and shallow at this point in his life and totally controlled by his physical desires. Can we verify with that? He looks good on the outside, but he's totally controlled by these inward passions and desires. In verse 31, And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. You see, he come in, he's tired, he's weary, and he says, Jacob, I need some of that same red, you see, he had had it before, I guess. He needs some of that same red pottage. Maybe Jacob had, you know, he said, this time I'm not giving it to you. This, you know, that this, uh, I can just imagine back in those days, uh, you didn't just go to the store, I mean, I mean, whoop up your little recipe, okay? That recipe came from the woods, maybe miles away, and, you know, it was sought after. There was some work to be done to fulfill a recipe in those days. And uh, it was work. I don't know how long of a work it took for uh, Jacob to prepare this pottage, whatever that was. Uh, but... No doubt, it must have been something of importance that caused him to say, you know what, you're not getting it free this time, buddy. Uh, th this is what I have uh, went out and, and prepared for myself. And you know what, you're going to pay for it. If you want it, you're going to pay for it. I want your birthright. You see, many times the devil, he comes at the weakest times in our life. 
He comes at those moments whenever he sees you on your knees. He sees you in despair. He sees you weak. He sees your vulnerable uh, point of your life and uh, maybe you're just uh, you're, you're down, you're depressed or whatever it is. That's when the devil comes in to attack and say, you know what? I'll give you this for that. I'll give you a little bit of pleasure for this. You know what? Every time that we yield to the, the flesh and sin, we do it at the cost of the blessings of God in our life. You see, God's blessings and sin doesn't stay in the same pot. They do not. Amen. That's why we are, are uh, taught through the scriptures, you know, that we have an advocate with the Father. I mean, God has made every way for us to stay right with Him. He has. God wants us to stay right with Him. Why? Because He don't want sin and righteousness dwelling in the same temple. It can't be that way. So if we choose for unrighteousness to dwell in our temple, amen, I, I don't know why, you know, we, we, uh, we, ha we need to understand that, that sin, that carnalness, it can't dwell in your, it can't be part of your life. There's many today that want to serve God today and forget Him tomorrow. That doesn't work. We can't have both pieces of the pie, can we? No. We know there's pleasures in sin. The Bible says so. But it also says that the pleasures of sin endure for a what? <clears throat> for a season. That means just a time. And then it's over. The pleasures of sin, they last for a little bit. But all oh, the blessings of God, the goodness of God in our life, it lasts longer than a season. It'll last forever if we allow it. Praise God. If we keep the blessings of God. But there's something that you and I must do. We must endeavor to keep our blessings that God has blessed us with. Amen. And I want to do that. Thank God. Hallelujah. I think during all those years while Isaac was favoring Esau, Jacob was dreaming Maybe of a way to get that birthright for himself. No doubt it was a premeditated idea that he worked all together. And the first chance he got when he seen all uh, Esau, Esau at his weakest point, he thought, well, this is the time. I'm fixing to get that birthright. I'm fixing to do whatever I need to do. And sure enough, he gave it up. Oh my, can you see that this morning? Don't give up your blessings. Don't give up your blessings for such a small thing in this life. Praise the Lord. To be fair, you have to give Jacob credit. At least the thing he desired was worth having. By the way, he got it at, a, at, his, uh, at the very least unbrotherly. He took advantage of Esau's weakness to get him, get from him something he couldn't have obtained any other way. But you say, did not God's promise to bless the younger over the older? Yes, God has promised it. Then Jacob didn't need to trick Esau out of it. God doesn't need that kind of help, does he? He can find a way to give the birthright and the blessing to Jacob in his own time. You know what? Let's, let's take note here this morning. <clears throat> God will bless you in your own time. God will give what you need in your own time. God knows when we need it, what we need, and when we need, doesn't He? And you know what? If God was to give you the things that you think you need that He knows that you can't handle right now, it would just be a disaster to your lives. Well, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. I, I just don't, it, it isn't coming. I don't have all the answers for that this morning. But I know this one thing, that God knows what He's doing. Amen. God knows what He's doing this morning. Praise the Lord. Just as you studied in your Sunday school lesson about Gideon, that seemed crazy for God to take away that man's army. Whittle him down to nothing. God's had to whittle me down to nothing. Hasn't He you? He'll do that. God whittles us down. It, you know, we thank God, this is crazy. There's no way that I can, you know, that this is going to work. But trust God, it will work. 
You see, God has the power to change a man's mind that you don't have. Isn't that something? Praise the Lord. Genesis 25, 32, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright be to me? What good is it going to do? Here's a man that whose sensual desire so controlled him that when he sees the stew, nothing else matters. When he's seen that, Oh, I've got to have that red pottage. I've got to have it. I've got to have that. You know, I, I know what it tastes like. He, that same red pottage he's tasted before. And for some reason, he forgot about the most important things in life. That's what sin does. It makes us forget about our family. It makes us forget about our loved ones. It makes us forget about what life really is. For that one little moment of pleasure. There was a, a bull in a pen. And he seen some other cows in a far distant pen. He had six other cows with him in the pen. And he was the bull of those cows. But he got to seeing those cows over in a far distant pen. There were several Fences between him and those other cows. I'm talking Brother Dwayne's language this morning. And the bull thought, I, I want to get over to them cows. Don't forget, he had six cows with him. So one day, he took a leap over the fence, cut his belly all up trying to get over that fence. Then he had another fence to get over. He cut himself again. Then when he finally got over in there in that distant place with them other cows, guess what? It was three bulls. That isn't what he wanted. And I want to tell you what. The devil can make you think that you want something over yonder. And it's not what you think. He gave up his life. He gave up what he was made to do in his own pasture thinking that it was better somewhere else. You see, that's just what the devil does. He gives you a little glimpse of something. He makes you think that this is what it is. He paints a picture. I'm not happy here. I need to be over there. For some odd reason, it just never ends up right, does it? Never does. You know what? God wants us to be happy where we're at. Don't waste your blessings. Don't waste what God has placed in your life. The devil would come to some of us and, and try to beat us down and think that, oh, life is just not worth living and you've just got it so bad and this and that and the other. <laughs> and maybe there are bad things in your life that you wish were different. But trust God, He'll change that in time. He always has, He always will. Amen. Don't give up your blessing. Don't give up your blessing. What such a short-sighted vision that Esau had. How many of us here this morning, has the devil convinced us is our vision just sh so short, so shallow? Oh, that God would open our vision this morning. Oh, and see a bigger picture. Amen. To realize, I mean, sometimes we have to sit down and realize what we have. Amen. Amen. <laughs> take a list. Take a, you know, look, look at other people in this world that are less fortunate than you are. Amen. Maybe, I mean, there's always somebody that's got it worse off than you do. Amen. Let's thank God for what we have. Amen. And be thankful and grateful. Amen. For his word says to be content with such things that you have. Praise God. Amen. He was such a uh, short-sighted individual here in this time of his life. 
his desires, his sensual desires here. They controlled him. He, he sees nothing but a, a bowl of pottage and nothing else matters. He's ready to trade the most important possession of his lifetime, his inheritance for a bowl of pottage. What well, doesn't mean anything? I'm about to die anyway. How many of us have said the same thing? Oh, life is about over. I'm just at the end. There's nothing else to do. There's, there's no way anything's going to come out of this. It doesn't matter anymore. Be careful, my friend, whenever you get to that area in your life. Amen. Many of us have seen right here God take our life and turn it about face. And our heads are still spinning wondering why how God done it amen you can't outthink God whenever you get to that point that you think that everything is hopeless don't give up your blessing don't give up your blessing verse 33 and Jacob said swear to me this day and he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob he's he's getting the signature Jacob is. He's getting a bowl of pottage. He's giving it to Esau. Esau, all that Esau could see was that bowl of soup. Nothing else mattered to him. He didn't care, so he gave away that birthright. He was unconcerned of losing out. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Now, isn't that just like sin? How that whenever we partake of sin and it satisfies the flesh for a few moments. And then the Bible says that he rose up. He rose up out of the, you know, the setting of eating his supper that he so wanted so badly. And he went his way. In the very next words of this scripture, thus Esau despised his birthright. That haunted him for the rest of his life for a bowl of soup. Can't you imagine with me this morning that Esau, maybe someone would want to sit down and talk to him about it. And he'd say, I don't even want to discuss it no more. It's crazy why I've done that. I don't know what I was thinking. <clears throat> We've said that before, haven't we? What was I thinking? Why did I give up this and that? Why, why? I don't have the answers of why you gave up the things of yesterday, but I can tell you what you have this morning. Don't give up your blessings. Hallelujah. Don't give up what God has done for you in your life. <laughs> Amen. A loser's character is impulsive he lives in the moment he lives for the moment and demands immediate gratification gratification he just wants things right now you know what i'm talking about sin it's just a a quick fix we think for some reason i mean we know sitting here this morning that <laughs> A drunkard, he drowns his problems for a few hours. And then after that moment is over, his problems are still there, right? They never went anywhere. I'm not trying to call anybody a loser this morning. I'm just telling you what sin will cause you to lose. Amen. Don't give up your blessings this morning but this is exactly how a lot of people lose their blessings living on impulse for the moment for immediate gratification many people are like this uh, area in money many trade their blessings for all kinds of gratifications in this life people trade their morality for a few moments of gratification by through impulse decisions at the moment decisions impulse decisions 
I want to tell you what. Be careful of making decisions just like that. You know what? That doesn't matter. That, it, not in just that area, but every area of your life. People in the business world will think, oh, you've got to make a decision right now. If you don't trust me, go, go to the car salesman. Oh, it's got to be done right now. This deal is just, just for the next hour. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's just fixing to go off. And, you know, that, you know what I'm talking about. This deal won't be here tomorrow. Let, let me see your name and your address. And <clears throat> we got to make a decision today. And you try to walk away and say, now let me think about it for a little bit. Well, man, what is there to think about? And this is such a great deal. And, I mean, just pressure, pressure, pressure. That's exactly what the devil does to you. He's a good salesman, isn't he? You got to make this decision right now. <clears throat> that car salesman is scared that if you walk away and you think about it for a few minutes, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not sweet as it sounds. Right. You get to adding up all the interest and all the payments for your fisting to pay. And, and you think, man, I don't know if I want to do that. And <clears throat> you look around and you find something a little bit more affordable. And he lost out on a sale because you took too long to think. But I want to tell you what. Let's think about our decisions that we're making. Because we don't want to lose out on our blessings. Don't lose your blessings is what I'm preaching about this morning. Don't lose your blessings. Don't give up your blessings. Amen. Just like Esau done. He just gave it up for something so insignificant. The world says to us live for today and forget tomorrow. They don't see the consequence though. But God would say, live wisely for a better tomorrow. Ephesians 5 verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. I want to tell you what, if we'll live wise now, it'll prepare you for the blessings for tomorrow. Amen. We need some wisdom, don't we? God will give us that wisdom. Praise the Lord. Look at what Esau lost. He lost a double inheritance. If we understand the biblical background, birthright was the most prized possession of the oldest son. He would be given an extra share of his father's property. He lost the promises of God by giving up the birthright. Esau gave up those promises that God had given to Abraham. He was right in line to receive all those promises given and he messed it up over a bowl of pottage. Esau gave up his power. He gave up his authority. As head of the whole family, you see his father's absence, the firstborn son had authority over his younger siblings. Esau had it all. As the firstborn, he had inheritance, power, and the promises of God. He had everything he wanted, yet traded it all for that bowl of soup. Are you with me this morning? God has given us every blessing. Every blessing. Esau had through Abraham. You see, Abraham, Esau had these blessings through Abraham. Just as Esau had it, we have those blessings through Jesus Christ. Amen. And most of the time we trade our blessings for the things of this world. My, my, my. Right. For you see, every believer in Christ has a birthright. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's something that comes along with being saved. Colossians 1.15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Romans 8.17, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. John 17, verse 10, And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Don't say your birthright like Esau did. Don't give up your blessing. Don't trade away your privileges in the kingdom of God for a few 
worldly pleasures. Are you listening to me this morning? Don't sell the promises of God in your life. <laughs> Hebrews 6.14 saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply. These are the blessings said of Abraham. Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many be defiled. Many are defiled because they are not keeping their head straight, right? They're just like Esau. He traded a few moments of eating that soup for the rest of his life. Amen. I know it sounds like a broken record this morning, but don't give up your blessings. Don't give up what God has given to you. Amen. Many of us set, have a family that we're setting by. And if you don't have a family, I'm sure there's something that you can be proud that God has done in your life. <clears throat> and don't trade that. Don't give it up. Don't sell your power to the world. Everybody's trying to get a good deal, aren't they? But I want to tell you what, there's not a deal good enough for me to trade my salvation for. Amen. Amen. Someone come to the pen if you would. Hebrews 12, verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward. When he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Oh my, that, that, that should grip our hearts this morning. Esau, it said here in the book of Hebrews, that for he found no place of repentance. Maybe he walked through his life and he could not find a place that God would forgive him. Read it for yourself this morning. Hebrews 12, 17. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He cried and he wept over his sin. But he found no place of repentance. Don't give up your blessing. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't trade your spiritual authority for a short-lived pleasures of sin. We have the power in the name of Jesus, don't we? We have the power. He has given us that power. To each and every saint of God. We have authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have that authority. We have the power. As God's children. Amen. We have a right. He's given us that right through salvation. Don't give up your blessing. Hey man, I want to challenge your heart and mind and soul this morning as you come to this altar to pray that God would help you to keep a hold of your blessing. Hey Amen. Realize that there's a robber and a thief, as Peter said, that walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's seeking to devour your blessing. He's seeking to get your blessing from you. But by God's grace and help, amen, I want to retain mine. How about you? Yeah. Amen. Let's all stand. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for each and every one, God, as we're able to hear the word of the Lord this morning. I pray, God, for the blessings and encouragement upon the altars, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's come around.